All right, a number one here. According to the court, how did the school's responsibility for citizenship education affect students' First Amendment rights? What do you have, Sarah? Okay, all right, good, good, good. So, uh, yeah, pretty much stating that if it is affecting student um, development, education, then obviously they can maybe restrict it. Good, good. Madden, what do you have for number one? Yeah, good, good job, good job. So policies that are created by the school that make sure that the students aren't uh, maybe acting up, right? And in this case, I know I had advice first, I apologize. Hopefully there's no, there's no uh, misunderstanding here. So with this court case you read, this is the one about obviously the, uh, the student that was campaigning for his buddy, right? Yeah, campaigning for his buddy. So after this assembly, there's a lot of hooting and hollering, obviously, and many of the students were talking about it throughout the school day, and it caused what? A disruption to education. So that's why it was kind of sided with the uh, school district. All right, good. Two, how did the court distinguish between Tinker case and the Frazier case? What do we have here for this? Jamie, what do you have for two? Um, I really didn't understand the question. Okay. All right. That's fine. So you're kind of on the right track there. Sarah, what do you have for two? Uh, Tinker's case, it was uh, the protest was symbolic and political. Therefore, it didn't disturb the school day like Frazier's case. All right. Good. So the Tinker test, right? So is this causing an issue to the school day? Is this causing a disruption? And with Tinker, that was what? Symbolic speech, right? And what were they wearing? Black armbands, okay, to try to show their opinion about the Vietnam War. In Frazier's case, well, he was inciting a lot of, a lot. Of, well, his pure speech, right, expressive speech in, in the assembly. And this was causing a huge disruption in the school day, as many kids were talking about it, and, uh, yelling throughout the school, and uh, obviously laughing still about it when this assembly occurred. All right, good, good. And Again, I think I talked about that yesterday with the tinker test and to see if this is causing any disruptions of the school day. And if it does, well, school districts can maybe limit that freedom of speech. Good. Three, what do we have? Suppose Frazier had given the same speech to a group of students away from the school grounds, but I had nevertheless been punished by the school officials. How do you think the court would have ruled in that case? Give reasons for your answer. Jeffrey, what do you have? I have Frazier would have won the case as the school cannot extend authority outside of school around the jurisdiction of the school district. Oh, okay. Good work. Good work. So again, separated from the school. It didn't happen within the school premises and uh, out of its jurisdiction. So if they did it, maybe at a, a different area uh, that was not associated with the school, then most likely I uh, would have been imbued in favor of the, of the students, right? Of Frazier. Good, good job, good job. So that's kind of self-explanatory, right? Four, what did the court say about the difference between adults' rights under the First Amendment and students' rights under the same amendment? Brock, what do you have for four? Yeah, good job, good job. So again, uh, through this development process, right, this nurture of the students, they will gain those rights eventually, but with this, if it's associated with the school, if this is something obviously that's educating the students and uh, some of this language being used in this pure speech by Frazier wasn't appropriate, right? And obviously wasn't something that was suited for younger, younger kids. Good, good. Oh, where are we at here? Five, do you agree or disagree with the court's ruling of Frazier case? Give reasons for your answer. Tanner, you didn't do it. That's right. Chase, what do you have for five? Uh, I said, I agree with the ruling that the uh, school integration of the education of the I think that's what's wrong. Yeah. 
<laughs> what? Now that I just read that, I realized that that doesn't make any sense. Why it's oh. Hmm. What court case do you read? Uh, this one, but. <laughs> all right okay all right nathaniel what do you have all right holy or whatever wait what what did you say okay so you agree with the court's ruling yeah okay all right so you're saying that maybe students freedom of speech should be limited to school and it's causing some sort of uproar or any type of problem. Okay. Sarah, what do you have for five? Uh, I said I agree with the court's ruling because it puts out a limit on what kids can say, like where do you draw the line? Because we are still learning how and growing, so we should be guided in some sense. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Yeah. So maybe uh, we need to be guided a little bit more with our decision making <laughs> and uh, with our ability to express yourself right good jeffrey what do you have i have no that i don't agree with the courts first of all the guy that he was campaigning for great name jeff love it <laughs> second of all he was using his pure form of speech and that is a form of speech which is protected by the person that may find out he should have been allowed to give his speech as the school said he was allowed to give said speech okay all right, some administrators, though, said, I eh, probably shouldn't give this speech. There's going to be some problems, repercussions from it, right? But they still allowed him to go up on stage. They right? did allow him to go up on stage. Okay. okay. He is to say that now that he was told not to do it. <laughs> Just because his name is Jeff, right? That's it. All right, okay. All right, so you're saying that maybe the school district shouldn't have a restriction on his voice, even if he's in the school, right, associated with the school for this type of this type of uh, case. Okay, all right, Jeffrey, good. Lex, what do you have, buddy? I agree with the court's ruling based on the fact that it didn't, it didn't interrupt class afterwards. And I also agree with question four, which I took a direct quote from, which was, schools have a basic responsibility to educate students for citizenship, not for the public school schools to be the use of vulgar language in public discourse in school all right good good so majority said yes anybody else say no anybody else say no in here i guess i won't ask chase but yeah <laughs> okay all right okay okay so you did try yeah a good try is good <laughs> all right bell ringer for today here we go Detail how school districts can limit and restrict freedom of speech of students. Within your response, reference Hazelwood versus Colmare and Bethel versus Frazier. So I'm going to fix that up for you guys. So you obviously don't have any problems with that uh, associating the two. That is my bad on that one. <laughs> oh, Chase, that was great.
Are you done with your bell ringer? Yeah. You sure? You're not lying to me, are you? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? So, detail how school districts can limit strict freedom of speech of students. So, reference these two court cases that we talked about yesterday in class here. Chase. Okay. Cool Meyer, yep. Well, talking about it, right? So talking about other people and maybe their personal issues. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You're on the right track there. Good. What else you got? Anything? Is that it? Yeah. Okay, good. Sarah, what do you have? all right yeah good job good job so we talked a lot about how people's freedoms were restricted uh, during the time of warfare the sedition acts the espionage acts and how many people like shank and debs uh we talked about get low in new york right and uh, in these certain circumstances, these people of freedom of speech and expression could be limited. And we'll talk about assembly here soon. And we'll also talk about religion and how that uh, plays a huge role in many court cases uh, with education. But here in school districts with expression and uh, freedom of speech, uh, these two court cases really kind of hit the nail on the head. And we talked a lot about the Tinker Test, Tinker versus Des Moines and how the court case actually ruled in favor of the children because the symbolic speech wasn't causing any issues to really the school day, right? It wasn't causing any problems uh, with the educational process. Yeah, there might be people talking about it, discussing about it. And obviously we, we talk about it today, so that might be the case, but it didn't cause an issue to the educational process. And these two court cases, totally different, right? With the writing in a newspaper that uh, is associated with the school, and if this is getting out to the community, if this is obviously something that maybe is damaging or harmful to other students in the school, then obviously that can be restricted, that can be limited by the school district. And with Bethel versus Frazier, uh, these, these uh, derogatory terms and these terms that are being used, um, obviously not suitable for some children, some, some students in the school and being associated with the school district, uh, it could be very uh, problematic, even if the candidate's name is Jeff. 
All right. So, time for today. <clears throat> You'll see it here attached. I can't believe I messed that up. Oh, well. Many of you didn't catch on to it, so <laughs> it's what it is. It is what it is. I'm going to publish that now for you guys. Should be ready to go. And that's what I got for today. So you have enough time to complete this. And we already talked about this court case. So this should be pretty easy. A lot of the questions that are attached uh, are opinionated. So I like to hear your opinion on it. And make sure you're reading the right court case, I guess, even if it's just attached to the question. All right, there we go. There we go. So I believe I attached the right one this time. Right, Brock? There's nothing there? <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, here we go. Man. Maybe there's a canvas issue. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. I don't know. I don't know. This is where I was having trouble. I think this is just a sign. Really? Yeah. Was there? Because we had a whole sign there. Five oh four gateway timeout. What? All right, I'll figure it out. I'll try to get attached as soon as.